Zack, they're here.
Yes. <laughs> hmm? Here, over here. <laughs>
Agent Morgan, if you're so desperate, then why not smoke two at once? It... Who's that old man? That's Harry. Harry Stewart. One of the bigger problems around here. His father started up the lumber trade and founded this town. But he's a weird one, as I'm sure you can see. Always dressed like that, never speaking to the townsfolk. And just FYI, he owns almost the entire town. Not that that makes any difference. So long as I'm around, he won't be getting away with any funny business. Mr. Francis York Morgan. Haste won't lead you to what you seek. Keep your eyes focused on your footing as we speak. So says Mr. Stewart. Nice to meet you too. How did you know my name? Mr. Francis York Morgan. Information desires you, just as you desire information, too. So says Mr. Stewart. Harry, stop trying to get in our way. Keep this up, and even you'll have to answer to the law. Mr. Francis York Morgan, with each rain our town goes mad. To our disdain, unpreventable. So sad. So says Mr. Stewart. Thanks for the warning. Then we shall depart, Mr. Francis York Morgan. That's how he always is. Always spouting that nonsense. Don't give it any thought. It's all gibberish. Emily here. Uh-huh. Oh. Okay, thank you, Thomas. Agent York, we've contacted the first witnesses to the crime scene. You can interview them where they found the dead body. Excellent. I was just about to ask if you could take me there. was found in the Greenvale Forest Park. That's west from here, and too far to walk. A forest park? It's the pride of the town. It has a beautiful trail leading to a viewing site over Velvet Falls. That does sound fantastic. Show me the sights. Uh, that may have to wait. We promised to be there by 1800 to interview the first witnesses to the crime scene. Agent Morgan, if I could just give you a friendly warning. Are you really upset about me taking over the case? <clears throat> I have the authority approved by the FBI to assume command. I understand you don't like it, but you will follow my orders. I'm not disputing FBI authority, but this is our town. You won't get far alone, and you gain nothing by antagonizing me. It's part of my personality. I just do things my way. I can take you off the case if you wish. Stop it, you two. We need to solve this case, not bicker among ourselves. Mm.
Anna's body was discovered by the woodsman Jim Green, along with his two grandchildren, Isaac and Isaiah. What were they doing in the forest? Just their daily routine. They found Anna's body during a morning walk. So you've talked to them already? Not officially. Not yet. Not yet? Are you out of your mind? You haven't interviewed them yet? Agent York, that tone is hardly appropriate. We were given orders to wait for you to arrive. Orders by who? A man called Abrams from the FBI. Robert, is it? Good old Bob Abrams. I did tell him to stay out of it. It's always tough to have a meddling boss, huh, Zach? I thought you knew, Agent Morgan. Don't worry about it. We may not have taken official statements, but we got all the information we need. I can fill you in right now if you'd like. Thanks, George, but that won't be necessary. I want to hear the details from the witnesses themselves, firsthand. I just can't believe that the children had to witness the crime scene. They may be traumatized. You'd better do this carefully. Don't tell me you get nervous talking to children, Emily. Not at all. That's that's not what I meant. Then what did you mean? Ugh, just forget it. Agent Morgan, how much longer do you want to keep talking? Maybe we should cut the chit-chat and go get our official statements. George is right. Let's head over to the forest park. Agent Morgan, how much longer do you want to keep talking? Maybe we should cut the chit-chat and go get our official statements. George is right. Let's head over to the forest park.
Is this government land? No, it's private. Owned by Harry. This whole area? That's right. I'm sure I mentioned that he owns pretty much the whole town. He used the money left by his father to buy up most of the town. Many town residents live on his land. Zach, did you hear that? This entire park. A rich man's personal playground. These country rich folk are amazing. It all looks very well kept, too. I'm FBI Special Agent Francis York Morgan. Please call me York. It's what everyone calls me. And you are Jim Green? That I am, son. I keep these woods. Well, you're doing a fine job. Well, I used to be a tree surgeon. And these two discovered the body? Yes, my grandchildren, Isaac and Isaiah. Zach, you see that? Twins. Just like in my dream. We gotta keep an eye on these two. I'm sorry. Could we talk away from the boys? I want to help your investigation, but I don't want them to hear this. Very well. Emily, please. I'll just take them over there, then. Thank you. Hold on. Don't do anything without asking me. These children were the first to witness the crime scene. I want to talk to them. Come on, they're just kids. They have no idea what really happened to Anna. That doesn't matter. You agree with me, right, Zach? How heartless. Do you ever think of other people's feelings, ever? Emily's right. That's stone cold, even for the sake of investigation. Children see things in pure, simple terms. They may have seen something we adults would never spot, and they are here at our request as well. We could at least chat with them and see if they want to make a statement. Are you serious? I never joke about matters like this. Oh my god. Don't worry. They aren't as fragile as you think. Look at them, standing so upright. Now then, Isaac, Isaiah, tell me, what did you find here? Anna, she was so pretty. She had a red dress on. Her hair was shining. Bright gold hair. There were lots of animals around her. Squirrels, weasels, and a snake. A real snake. We didn't know until then. But we know now. Anna was the fairy of the forest. She was a goddess. She smiled when she saw us. She looked so happy. That's right, Isaac. Isaiah, she was a fairy, a goddess. I'm sure she is playing with those animals even now. Of course she is. Yeah, of course. Most useful information, boys. Well, Emily, you can take them now. OK, Zach. This is where Anna's body was. And that means our unsub, our unknown subject, was here too. So, what happened here? Zach, something is still missing. We need more clues.
I haven't seen one of these in a long time. It's upside down. I guess this is meant to be an anti-peace sentiment then. These holes on the ground were made by uh, high stiletto heels all around here. And this depression here, Agent Morgan, I see what happened here. I hung her from the tree and put on her shoes. He's really enjoying it. Go. He knelt down. And, and disgusting. George, you certainly have a vivid imagination. An interesting theory. Don't you think, Zach? So what was his name again? That Hollywood producer. That's right. Joel. To introduce George to him, Zach. Profiling is a little different from writing a screenplay, though. An idea being interesting doesn't make it fact. Let me enlighten you, George. The footprints reveal that one of the heels were missing from the shoes. And they're different from Anna's shoes that we saw at the office. Furthermore, there would be even more disgusting evidence if he did kneel and, well, do as you suggested. If you want proof, go ahead and try it for yourself. He knelt here for a reason other than simple perversion. Zack, what was he doing in front of Anna?
he was kneeling to pray in front of her. Just like the twins said, she was a goddess. The unsub, our unknown subject, offered prayers to Anna's body, its bitten out tongue and massive body wound. Once dead Anna was transformed from an object of despite into one of worship. So who is Miss Stiletto Heels? The steps are close coming up to the body and then farther apart going away. There was a reason to hurry away then. That settles it then, George. Miss Stiletto Heels is a third party here. She's not the murderer. No one runs away from an object of worship. She could be another victim who was with Anna. Or perhaps an accomplice who fled for some reason. She is also one who took whatever it was Anna was holding on to in her hand. But why? Why did she leave her here? Only Miss Stiletto Heels knows the reason for that. She might know something about the man with the reversed peace mark, too. How many women wear high stiletto heels in this town, do you think? Oh, I should think most of them have at least one pair. I do, too, before you ask. But nobody would come all the way out here wearing them, except, well, except maybe one person. Don't keep me in the dark, then. Who might this elegant lady be? Diane the owner of the art gallery. But she's out of town for a big art auction. I heard she'll be coming back in a couple days. Then we'll just have to give her a warm welcome home. A more immediate matter then. Where in town can you find something like this? It should be a building that isn't used anymore, with either a lot of metal or metal machinery or something like that. The old lumber mill. Then it's time to really get this show on the road. Could you guide me to this perfect setting for extravagant murder? mill is pretty far from here. If that's where she was killed, why would the killer go to all the trouble of carrying her all the way here? I don't know yet. My profiling instincts tell me one thing is for sure, though. The unsub's personality is totally different before and after the crime. The unsub killed her in a brutal, horrifying way, and then displays powerful adoration after she's dead. Something close to love. That could well be the key to all this. I will say this, though, George. Profiling is a risky business. Of course, if the unsub planted those stiletto footprints himself, well, then everything I've just said falls apart. But there's no evidence that he left those stiletto footprints. I'm sure we have Miss Stiletto Heels to thank for those tracks. All I can do is deduce the unsub's feelings in light of the evidence and carefully figure the unsub's M.O., modus operandi, his way of thinking. It usually unveils something that a normal forensic analysis may overlook. That's my way of profiling. It's not for everyone, but it works for me. When I first joined the force, this lumber mill was still in full swing. It closed up right when I first moved here. And now it's totally abandoned. I presume so. I've never really been inside, so I don't know for sure, but 
sure is run down. Deserted buildings are perfect for criminal hideouts and activities. I keep telling Harry to have the place torn down. Probably a little late for that. After all, it's already been used as the site of Anna's murder. We don't know that for sure yet, Agent Morgan. But that's right, from your point of view. But the perpetrator selected the lumberman. Agent York, you seem very confident about this. Confident? No. Confidence is a sweet spot between being rude and hopeless. I'm just drawing natural conclusions from the facts that we have seen. That sounds exactly like being full of confidence, at least to me. And to normal people with common sense. Common sense can be the opposite of facts sometimes. Bear that in mind. Oh, I will, Agent York. Thank you for another pearl of wisdom. Either way, we'll know for sure by simply going to the lumber mill. So keep your pearls of wisdom to yourself, and let's hurry. Well said, George. Can you step on it, Agent York? Let's go and find out. Oh, Zach, we're here. Let's continue our chat later. I'm going in alone. You two stay here. I can't concentrate on profiling with other people around me. Now hold on a minute. We're investigating this case together. Listen, I can't risk the crime scene being compromised by you two. What are you saying? You're not the only professional law enforcement officer here, Agent Morgan. We know how to secure a crime scene. I'm sorry. That was rude of me. But this is how I operate. Furthermore... Yes? Furthermore what? To me, the outsider FBI agent, every citizen of this town is a suspect. You two could be in on this whole thing for all I know. I have to keep suspects out of the crime scene. How can you say such a thing? Is he making fun of us? We should have left him behind and come here by ourselves. You're right. I've never been so insulted. I'm sorry, but I'm just doing my job. <laughs> 